Hi everybody, it's August 8, 2018. I was left this link below in the description or in the comment section. Below one of my videos, Earth at risk of becoming hothouse. Hothouse if tipping point reached. Report warns. This was posted on CNN. That lying news media yesterday and one of the reasons for this video is I want to show you I've captured these mainstream media articles in the last month July and I couldn't capture all of them because there are so many they are so pushing the global warming climate change lie right now at the same time that they are creating so many man-made disasters. It's not Mother Nature. It is not God. It is induced by man with the technology that man is using to control the weather. I just, I, I need to point out that, you know, there are so many people who, especially those who have a college degree. They've been educated, higher education. There is an arrogance in so many. Now, I am an ex-liberal, progressive Democrat. I didn't put those labels on me, but that was the social network that I operated in pretty much my entire life up until uh, maybe about five, six years ago. These liberal progressives believe that they are the educated elite. And there is an arrogance with these liberal progressives. They do believe that they are smarter than everyone. If they have college degrees, if they have masters or doctorates, well, it seems there is a correlation between the amount of degrees that one has and the amount of arrogance that one has. And unfortunately, they do not see, because they travel in the same social network, of people just like them, so they all support one another, and they support one another's arrogance, believing that they are smarter than anybody. But the correlation, too, is that with the more degrees and the more arrogance, the more stupid they become, the less intelligent they become. They think they know everything, they don't have to listen to people. They certainly don't have to listen to anybody that doesn't have a degree. They don't have to do any research because, well, they're quote unquote learned people. They know it all. How do I know this? Because I was one of them. That unfortunately really does make one incredibly stupid. And, well, because they're supported by one another, supported essentially by themselves, because they travel in a social network of people exactly like themselves. And, well, why should they ever have to give this up? If th that's the social network that they're going to remain in for the rest of their lives, they never change, they never grow, and wisdom, so lost. Common sense, so lost. Critical thinking, hey, I gave it up when I got all of my degrees on the wall. They don't understand that when they come across articles like this that are citing reports, a report published in uh, the American Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, they immediately think 
Wow, what a prestigious institution. And it's published in a science journal. They're so indoctrinated in, in still believing that these journals are publishing real science. They don't understand how every institution has been so thoroughly corrupted and they will never ever look into it even when they get the word from somebody who is incredibly reputable like Harvard Medical School's Dr. Marshall Angle or Angel not sure of the pronunciation no longer possible to believe much of clinical research published. And she quit. She was the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, that prestigious journal. She quit. She came out publicly and said, you cannot believe clinical research that is published in journals. Do you think it's only true for the New England Journal of Medicine? Or perhaps it's also true for the American Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Every institution has been thoroughly corrupted, infiltrated by people who are pushing lies because they profit from those lies, they have an agenda, and all of those who are not aware of the agenda, they're the useful idiots pushing the lies for money. This uh, global warming the climate change, all of mainstream media coming out strong. This published today, battling 18 blazes, California may face, face worse fire season. 14,000 firefighters from as far away as Florida and even New Zealand. They're struggling to curb 18 fires in the midst of a sweltering summer that has seen wind-whipped flames carve their way through national forest land and rural areas, threaten urban areas, and incinerate neighborhoods, incinerate the operative words, they incinerate homes and cars, but seem to leave intact all of the vegetation around the home. For whatever reason, fires are burning much more intensely, much more quickly than they were before. For whatever reason, that coming from the president of the California Fire Chiefs Association, one of the reasons, geoengineering, all of the spraying of chemicals and heavy metals that make these fires far more flammable. They are spraying nanoparticulates, aluminum, barium, strontium, Lithium, which I'm going to show you, the amount of lithium that is being dumped in our sky here in Anderson, South Carolina, and I have no doubt that it is being dumped in a lot of areas, California, Oregon, Washington, oh, just where it so happens that those wildfires are so incendiary they can't control them. Well, when you dump highly flammable material onto all of these trees and homes all over, you get these fires that burn more intensely and more quickly than ever. Amazing how we have these people who just can't seem to connect the dots well, they purposely don't connect the dots, but California is seeing earlier, longer, and more destructive wildfire seasons because of drought. 
warmer weather attributed to climate change and home construction deeper into the forest. Really? So, how much home construction deeper into the forest? I, did you just put up so many homes out in California and Oregon and, and Washington uh, like in a year's time? No. Those homes were there for decades. But now suddenly it's a problem. They are, and Jerry Brown told you, you will be seeing a lot more fires. And I believe you're going to be seeing a lot more fires this year. They will incinerate more homes. And if people don't start to use their common sense and their critical thinking skills, the stupidity is killing us. And those who refuse to do any research to find out what is really taking place, you may very well lose your home very quickly. If everybody could just band together, unite, stop fighting over stupid stuff, and really become a force you know, trying to educate people and well then maybe we could get somewhere um, it is very 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 heartbreaking to see the destruction that is taking place not just from the fires the flash floods and everything that is happening very frustrating to continually have to say the same thing over and over and over again. But what choice do we have? We are at war and we have no choice. We have to somehow get through to people. You know, I, I, I want to show you, first of all, the home construction deeper into the forest. Now, the climate change. Okay. Um, the sweltering summer, the heat waves. I will either in this video or the next video show you how man can induce these heat waves and they are induced. But when you read on mainstream media sentences like this and they're talking about the home construction deeper into the forest if you know anything about Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. If you know anything about America 2050 and their mega regions, the construction of these mega regions, you will know then that that sentence in the AP article, deeper into the forest, you will be able to connect it to ah, that gray area where they do not want any human habitation. And they are deliberately destroying a whole lot of homes and people's lives in rural areas to either kill them or move them into mega regions. All of the gray area that you see on this map Eventually, there will be no human habitation. This is not a joke. This is very serious. They do want a small uh, number of people living in these mega regions. Here's Florida, here's the Gulf Coast, here's Piedmont Atlantic, the Northeast, the Great Lakes. And then you have the, um, can't seem to move it over. Let me X out up here, go back into it. Cascadia, Northern California, Front Range, Southern California, Arizona Sun Corridor, Texas Triangle. They do want everybody living in these regions so that they can have greater control the surveillance will be 24-7. And no, if you've read 1984, you know Winston in his apartment 
he had a little corner to sit in and he escaped the surveillance the television the telly screen that little corner is gone 5G surveillance took away that little corner they will be watching you in your homes watching you outside watching you at work 24 7 that's the smart sustainable resilient city that so many people are wow yeah we need that because well too many people are living in areas and they've taken over the wildlands they believe that we have too many people they're living in areas they're they've taken over the habitats of wild animals and that's not fair so you gotta move out of those areas you gotta move into mega regions the smart cities our population I don't believe is even 300 million I do absolutely believe that they have reduced the number greatly and in fact a United Nations report <laughs> unbelievable that the same institution can put out reports and yes I guess I'll have to uh, I guess I'll have to show you that report can't find the actual report and I don't want to <laughs> take time you know, it's really interesting because the searching now on Google or whatever search engine, it is so not like the, what, what it used to be. Um, but if you just read some of the first couple of pages on Google, you will find that there is a worldwide crisis a fertility crisis. Japan's fertility crisis is terrifying and unprecedented. The worldwide crisis of population decline. I'm so lucky that I have all of these guys with the Mustangs. Um, is low fertility a 21st century demographic crisis? Male infertility crisis in the United States has experts baffled You know, the worldwide crisis of population decline, part of an ongoing narrative, a recent United Nations report shows drop in average global fertility rates. The report I was looking for, the specific one, showing that the world's population has decreased, not increased, but at the same time, what do you have? You've got the United Nations posting articles like this, world population to hit 9.8 billion by 2050, despite nearly universal lower fertility rates. Wow, how does that work? They count now. They know the population has been so dumbed down, they understand that almost no one uses critical thinking skills anymore. They can post headlines like this, Publish head, uh, articles and the headline, despite universal lower fertility rates, we're going to see by 2050, 9.8 billion. How does that work? You know, it, it's, it's, it, it's so, I, I don't, I don't even know how it's like, it's easier to argue things that are difficult to argue than things that are easy to argue because, well, it, it should smack you in the face. Something's wrong with this. Something's wrong. We have a fertility crisis in most every country 
But at the same time, the United Nations claims that we're going to be hitting 9.8 billion by 2050. How does that work? So when you are faced with so many people who can't get the easy, that's why it's hard for us. Because you can come up with so many different ways to explain it, but they don't get it. And then you're just left, um, well, let's just say SMH, shaking my head. Okay, well, the world's population is declining. We have a fertility crisis. I do believe we have a male fertility crisis in the United States. And homes didn't just shoot up in the last couple of years in our forests. So there's something else going on, right? Well, we all know that. We all know that. Home construction deeper into the forests. They want people out of the forests. They want people out of rural areas. That's why a whole lot of areas are being hit repeatedly with fires, repeatedly with flooding. And it is a way to shuffle around people and get them to... Uh, live in these mega regions. The climate change, the sweltering summer. Now, I will say that it has been quite hot, but is it because of climate change or is it because of the technology that is being used to create these? heat waves, which I'll show you in a second. But I do want to show you, sorry, my computer is a little slow. A little slow? No, very slow. Um, I went on IntelliCast earlier today. Jesus, I'll watch it. And the first thing that I want to show you, and here I am on it uh, in real time, my real time, it's 5, 11 p.m., which means it is 2, 11 p.m. on the West Coast, California. And look at all of these earthquakes. Oklahoma, you have so many ultra-low frequencies being set off now. And you are having an awful lot of earthquakes going on. 12 kilometers. This is a 2 uh, on the Richter scale. And this was yesterday. Blanchard, Oklahoma. Yesterday, you got two more. Uh, Moreland, Oklahoma, 20 kilometers, 21 kilometers. Here you have today a 3.6 Medford, Oklahoma, and it's only five kilometers. When you see these earthquakes, these shallow earthquakes, they are a signature of ultra low frequencies, man causing these earthquakes. You see an awful lot in Utah. and Nevada and California and of course Hawaii they're just well Hawaii all right um you also have Hurricane Hector oh look at let's just take a look and the mimic video that I posted yesterday, last night. Those of you who wrote, they may be steering Hurricane Hector right into Hawaii, you might be right. But this, this already tells me that it is, as you can see, the squaring off, scalar squares, um, this is a fried, a fried uh, piece of uh, man's precipitation that he created. I don't know what else to say about all of 
this, it should be obvious to people, but it's not. You see all of the edges, these tiny little squares? This is not a real hurricane produced by Mother Nature. But I don't want to get into that. Um, I want to show you the temperature plots. And it was very interesting because I got on in telecast because it was so hot here in South Carolina. And I wanted to see what the temperature was. And first I just put in Anderson, South Carolina temperature and I got a local newspaper that said it was 93 degrees. And it was about noontime. But August, South Carolina, that's not unusual. That's not a heat wave for South Carolina. But something was making it far more uncomfortable. It's the air that is dead. The depletion of the negative ions and, and oxygen from our atmosphere that makes the heat far more intolerable, unbearable. Uh, it's like hard to breathe. So I went to IntelliCast. I put on the temperature plots. And, well, the temperature has gone down from what it was earlier today, which I will show you. So this was taken a couple of hours ago. Um, let me get the exact time. It was 1.25, which means that it was 10.25 in California. Look at all of these earthquakes. Okay, let's speed it ahead, get the temperature plots, and... Oh. Okay, so here in South Carolina, well, I live right up in upstate Anderson, and it puts 93 in Georgia. Well, it was 93 in Anderson. Um, but these are not heat wave temperatures. I listened to a mainstream media YouTube video last night. It was posted yesterday, and they were claiming that California was going to be seeing triple digits today triple digits temperatures. Well, uh, at 1025, these were the temperatures. And right along the West Coast, it was chilly. It was chilly. Sacramento, 68, 84, 72, 57. Uh, down Southern California, you have 92, 90, 88, 84, 81, 95. Um, so let's go up a little to where all the fires are in Northern California. And these are the temperatures, 78, 79. This is around Redding, 81, 75, 57, 57, 72, 78. Okay, they were claiming that it was going to be triple digits. And it was in Northern California, right where these fires were. Okay, at 1025, if this is the temperature, well, when now is the high temperature? When do we get the high temperature? Now, I have these um, Weather Channel pages open. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, 107 Palm Springs, 98 Sacramento. And this is also the Weather Channel. 72, 66, 77, 52, 52. If your temperature, and this I got at about the same time, like 1.30, if your temperature is going to increase approximately 25 or 30 degrees 
in a few hours? That is induced by man. Ah, it's, it's really very, very frustrating. So they claim triple temperatures, they, they, uh, triple digit temperatures. They claim these heat waves, these sweltering summers, and yes, they are, you know, quite sweltering, sweltering. But then you go to these maps, Weather Channel, which is absolutely a uh, propaganda weather site, and it is there to publish the propaganda on climate change, but these are the temperatures. I swear they are flooding us with contradictory information just to confuse the hell out of people so that they just give up, you know, can't figure out anything anymore and I'm just going to live, you know, in my own little reality and shut out everything that's happening. Well, you can't do that because that's part of the tactic. You know, just to confuse the hell out of people, create chaos, and a psychological tactic, wear us down. Wear us down. And we need to stand strong. So, very quickly, because I am going to be doing it uh, in my next video, I just want to go over some of these headlines. Scorching Earth, global warming to blame for all-time heat records being set worldwide. All of these July. Uh, air conditioning to tackle summer heat waves causes surge and deadly pollution. They will be controlling your use of all of your energy. It's going to happen soon. Certainly sooner than later. They will regulate, ration how much air conditioning you can use. I said earlier this year, when I started posting videos on, okay, the heat, I, I believe it was in March. They're creating these heat waves that we were seeing in March, so, or maybe it was early spring. I, I don't even remember, but very early in the year, I said we're going to have to see more heat waves that will be induced by man and they will begin to ration energy. We'll see an awful lot of power outages this summer. And what have we been seeing? An awful lot of power outages. UK, same thing, more wildfires and food shortages loom as temperatures soar. All of this is deliberate. Heat wave sparks major power outages around Los Angeles. Influence of global warming on U.S. heat waves may be felt first in the West and Great Lakes regions. Deadly heat waves becoming more common due to climate change. 30 years warmer. James Hansen, a despicable, corrupt to the core guy, NASA scientist who comes out and, yep, it's climate change. And we have NASA scientists who, how many of them? 25 scientists co authored an open letter to NASA saying we're tired of you pushing this climate change, this global warming uh, hysteria when there was great dispute among the scientists. No, there is no consensus. All you hear is propaganda. Lies from mainstream media and people like James Hansen. All you have to do is do a little bit of research and stop just saying, no, you're just crazy. Because you only reveal how unbelievably stupid you are when you do that. Global warming is increasing the risk of heat waves. Skeptical science. They create these websites. They call it skeptical science. So people who go there, they go, wow, well, these scientists are skeptical and they are claiming global warming is real. So it must be real. And all of those conspiracy theorists, well, they're just really crazy. 
they don't understand how all of this is working. By 21, deadly heat may threaten majority of human kind. 75% of people could face deadly heat waves by 20, by the year 21, unless carbon emissions plummet. A new study warns extreme weather could kill over 150,000 Europeans by 21. Adhering to Paris Agreement climate goal could significantly decrease heat-related summer deaths. All of this a lie. This coming out of University of Bristol. Ready for summer heat? Study finds new primary driver of extreme Texas heat waves. I posted this video, heat waves already, and all you need to know that it's temperature modification induced by man. I will link below to everything. Uh, heat waves seems to make man-made climate change real for Americans. 73% believe there is solid evidence of global warming. That, I believe, is just an utter lie. Uh, the, these heat waves appear to be shaping people's thinking. A survey finds. Well, it may be shaping people's opinions. They're bringing on disaster after disaster after disaster. That is part of the manipulation. That is part of, we've got to get Americans to believe in climate change. So, we'll cause these fires, these flash floods simultaneously, the heat waves simultaneously, and they will be like, oh my God, look at all of the disasters that is taking place due to these extreme weather events. My God, it is global warming. What else could it be? You've got to look into weather modification Please look into what your military has studied, perfected, the use of weather as a weapon. Please. UK must adapt to climate change now. Climate change poses threat to UK's historic churches. Strong winds, more frequent storms, and the arrival of termites to put towers and spires at risk. Hot topic. Heat wave raises awareness of climate change. So they they do publish these kinds of articles because peer pressure, when you have an awful lot of adult children in your population, peer pressure, really, it, it's a fabulous engineering of the individual. Oh, I can't speak my opinion because it's different from everybody else's. So when they see these kinds of articles in mainstream media, heat wave raises awareness of climate change, more and more people are believing in climate change. Those who don't believe in climate change, they might not necessarily suddenly believe in it, but there are going to be silence. Silenced. They will be afraid to speak their opinion for fear of getting shamed. Preparing for and responding to energy emergencies, and I will tell you what the preparation is. Rationing your electricity. Al Gore warns of ominous record-breaking heat. Yes, he said, be stay safe and, and stay cool. And this was July 1. This man cares about nothing, no one, just how much money you can get. Electricity rationing returns to South Africa. And look at all of the microwaves in this sky. Heat waves sent US power demand surging to highest in years. Heat waves and climate change, extreme weather events, greater frequency, intensity, people will die or move, energy needs to be rationed, energy saving appliances, everybody has to renovate, you got to get rid of your old appliances, buy new appliances, and you can't use your air conditioning. The greater frequency and intensity, of course, they're coming at greater frequency and intensity because man is controlling weather. Heat waves will change how we live. We're not ready. 
oh my god, due to climate change, heat waves more frequent and severe. I'm showing you all of these mainstream media articles. They're all saying the same thing. They're all in lockstep, unison, throwing out all of the propaganda. Heat waves more frequent and severe. Lack capacity to deal with high temperatures. This article is about how we no longer can deal with these high temperatures. We're living in areas where we shouldn't be living. It places once desirable places, those desirable places, they'll become uninhabitable. And they're going to make sure that they're uninhabitable with all of these fires and the flash flooding. People will have to change. Cities need restructuring. Agenda 2030. Sustainable, resilient, smart cities where you will be locked into mega regions. And guess what? You will not have cars. You will be riding bicycles. You will not be able to travel outside your mega region. This is what is coming. It is unfortunate that we cannot get through to an awful lot of people. Um, in a warming world, could air conditioning make things worse? This is what you are looking at. And I will tell each and every one of you, those who you are trying to educate and they continue to tell you that you are crazy, they are your enemy because you have to suffer this world. Your children have to suffer this world. It is not okay for people to call you crazy and to claim that you're a conspiracy theorist when they have not done any research. They really need to be put in their place. This is not okay. And I don't care if they're the majority. They are 100% the enemy, and they help to create this world that you have to live in. And it is not only unfair, it is so incomprehensibly immoral. There is something wrong with these people. And I'm sorry if they're your family members, if they're your spouses, if they're your children. And I have to say, those of you who have, you know, these spouses who refuse to even listen to you, I don't know how you do it. I do not know how you do it. I couldn't do it. UN official calls for ARC to save world from global warming. That's right. Patricia Espinoza, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Climate Change Department, whatever, at a Vatican conference, she called for not a physical arc, but an arc for ambition, hashtag climate action on social media. Yeah. Every institution has been thoroughly corrupted. This guy gets a Nobel Peace Prize, a Nobel Prize, but think about Obama, who killed so many innocent children and others, created wars, and he got a Nobel Peace Prize before he even did anything. If that doesn't tell you that something is wrong with the Nobel Commission, I don't know what could, but there have been many Nobel laureates who, in an open letter, addressed that Nobel Commission and asked that Nobel Commission to take away Obama's prize. And they never did. They give these people Nobels because they want all of the ordinary people of the world to think that they're so brilliant. It's all to advance an agenda for the New World Order.
climate change is about morality. This is what Patricia Espinosa said. Climate change is about morality. Who are we to willingly destroy the ancient and intricate beauty of the world? Climate change is about legacy. Who are we to leave a debt of neglect to an unborn generation? Disgusting. Abject. Immorality in this woman. Yeah, we are destroying the planet. But it's people like Al Gore, or Jim Hansen, or Patricia Espinosa, or these uh, scientists you know, on the international uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change. It's, it's an awful lot of people who are destroying this world with the technology causing all of these events that are taking place. It's not because you breathe or you've got cows that bark or you drive a car. Al Gore's inconvenient re reality, you know, it came out years ago that he used energy in his own private home that was so unbelievably high and years after they found that it's even higher his use surges up to 34 times the national average and that's despite the costly green renovations that he said that he was going to be you know doing to his home when it came out that his energy use at that time was I don't know how many times greater than the national average. These people are despicable disgusting people. Twenty times more. How do you how do you respect people like this? There's nothing wrong with being a hypocrite. It made me a fat cat, literally and figuratively. IPC report under fire. IPCC science isn't science. Critics attack panels lack of specific guidance on how countries should lower emissions. Year after year after year, we are flooded with independent uh, journalists who publish articles on the science coming out of the IPCC, how it's not science, and we still can't get through the people. The IPCC's latest report deliberately excludes and misrepresents important climate science. Sorry for the interruption. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is releasing its latest report, like its past reports. This one predicts apocalyptic consequences if mankind fails to give the United Nations the power to tax and regulate fossil fuels and subsidize and mandate the use of alternative fuels. Every single report that the IPCC has released, and I think they're up to their fifth report, every time they release it, you have scientists come out and write, it's full of shit. It's not science. They, they go through the report, and it's just filled with flaws. And you still can't get through to people fundamental flaws to base IPCC fifth assessment. The IPCC seems more intent on trying to maintain the now dying consensus than in following climate science in its logical conclusion. A conclusion that increasingly suggests that human greenhouse gas emissions are less important in driving climate change than commonly held. Current wisdom, even more low climate sensitivity 
estimates. Wow. Well, there are scientists who are claiming that, no, sorry, uh, whatever you're saying, the climate will be either, and they do have ranges from 2 to 9 degrees Celsius. Wow. Well, when they have ranges that large, it's not science. They're guessing. And, well, maybe maybe the increase will fall somewhere in that range. And maybe it doesn't fall in that range at all. Like many scientists have said, Band-Aids can't fix the new IPCC report. The uh, fifth assessment report released by or released what is called the summary for policymakers. I have been saying the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is not a science panel. It is a policy panel and they release summary for policymakers. So the summary for policymakers. Humpty Dumpty esque with uh, Humpty Dumpty esque, -esque report, once claiming to represent the consensus of scientists, has fallen from an, its exalted wall and cracked to pieces under the burdensome weight of its own cumbersome and self-serving processes. All the government's scientists and all the government's men cannot put the IPCC report together again because it's just, it's a propaganda piece it's an agenda piece. It's not a science report. Aussie farmers face worse drought in 100 years. This is what man is doing to ordinary people all over the world. They're causing these droughts. You know, this article was in Zero Hedge, July 20, Global Warming Hysteria, Record Heat, Vanishing Sunspots, CO2, Lawsuits. Um, What's Up is a site that is, it has scientists publishing articles that refute what the IPCC and these climate scientists are saying, but they point out that where are they taking these temperature readings? They're taking them from places that are notoriously hot, like airports. Um, in the last couple of weeks, record highs have been set around the U.S., particularly in the Los Angeles area which I did a lengthy debunking of. Records were also set in Scotland, then denied by an errant ice cream truck, and also questioned in Africa. And the, the temperatures, the official weather station at airports, like in Rome, or airports in Los Angeles, they will be incredibly hot. So when you have these record temperatures that mainstream media or these scientists or the IPCC publish, they're coming from stations that are extremely hot and airports with all of the asphalt can make that one area far hotter than an area that is even just 20 miles away. And I have to tell you guys, six years running, I just have, on, I've saved so many the gargantuan lie of climate change science, climate change science. It's the worst scientific scandal of our generation. 
a much publicized estimate for the United Nations panel about the rapid melting of Himalayan glaciers from climate change is coming under fire as a gross exaggeration. UN panel's glacier warning is criticized as exaggerated. Open letter to IPCC on geoengineering. The undersigned organizations would like to express our concerns about the upcoming IPCC Joint Working Group Expert Meeting on Geoengineering to be held in Peru. This was in 2011. Geoengineering, the intentional large-scale manipulation of the Earth's systems to modify the climate is one of the most serious issues the international community will face in the decades ahead. Modifying the Earth's radiated radiative balance, devising new carbon sinks in fragile eco ecosystems, redirecting hurricanes and other extreme weather events are alarming. Well, they've been doing this. The potential for accidents, dangerous experiments, inadequate risk assessment, unexpected, unexpected weather that can arise when you are modifying the jet stream. There are ripple effects that occur when you modify the weather. If you create rain in one area, you create drought, drought in another. But here, the scientific steering group of this expert meeting includes well-known geoengineering advocates who have called for steep increases in funding for research and for proceeding with experimentation, as well as scientists who have patents pending on geoengineering technologies and or other financial interests. Asking a group of geoengineering scientists if more research should be done on the topic is like asking a group of hungry bears if they would like honey. Their predictable answer should be viewed with skepticism. The geoengineering scientists that they wanted to put on the United Nations IPCC panel. And they're there. At the same time, independent organizations which have devoted years of critical research to geoengineering are not allowed to participate, even as observers. On the expert meeting before its report is published and its conclusions are shared more broadly, we urge the IPCC to ensure that a variety of civil society, civil society voices is heard, understood, taken into account. This will provide much needed common sense and a global perspective as well as a counterpoint to the more prominent and extreme positions of some northern scientists engaged in geoengineering research. We thank you for your attention to these issues and did anybody listen to them? No, but these are all the organizations that signed on to that open letter. Is there really a consensus when you see a list like this? No need to panic about global warming. There's no compelling scientific argument for drastic action. Nobel Prize winning physicist resigns. He resigned from the physical society. Is that the name of that scientific organization? Because of their position on global warming. Unfortunately, we only have a few that know how to take the right action. And they're compelled. They have to. Because they have a moral core. Another climate alarmist admits real motive behind warming scare. We have been told now for almost three decades that man has to change his ways or his fossil fuel emissions will scorch earth with catastrophic warming. The narrative is a ruse.
if they were honest, the climate alarmists would admit that they are not working feverish, feverishly to hold down global temperatures. They would acknowledge that they are instead consumed with the goal of holding down capitalism and establishing a global welfare state. One has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. This has almost nothing to do with the environmental policy anymore with problems such as deforestation or the ozone hole. This is a man that co-chaired the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. He was on the working group on mitigation of climate change from 20, uh, 2008 to 2015. He was on the IPCC, their panel, and he came out and said it has nothing to do with climate change or environmental policy, but everything to do with the creation of a new world order the destruction of capitalism and establishing a global communist welfare state. Former NOAA scientist confirms colleagues manipulated climate records. Another IPCC scientist coming out. There have been so many that have come out and said, yeah, they first go on to this panel, they agree to come on to the IPCC thinking that they're doing the right thing at the United Nations. And then after being on that panel for a while, those with a moral core come out and say, wait a second here, something is wrong. Climate models fail. Scientists admit global warming is a hoax. Scientists admit IPCC used fake data to pressure policymakers. The IPCC now is damaged goods. It's mind-boggling fraud. And a glacier scientist said, I knew the data hadn't been verified. Okay, so you have mainstream media coming out and telling you it's a fraud. And the mainstream media coming out and they glorify the IPCC. So all of this is leading to an awful lot of confusion. People don't know which way to turn. They don't understand the social engineering of all that is taking place. They don't understand that they are being so greatly manipulated. They don't understand the use of psychological tactics to wear people down, to confuse them, so that they just throw their arms up and say, you know what, I can't deal. I'm just, I can't deal. I'm just going to live my life having fun until I die. And a lot of people are doing that. But when you have mainstream media, you have scientists from th this panel who come out and say it's a fraud, it's a hoax, they're damaged goods. You would think that the ordinary people who, who get their news from mainstream media, that they would be thinking, okay, why is mainstream media still pushing the IPCC? But they don't. Climate change science implodes as IPCC climate models found to be totally wrong. Temperatures aren't rising as predicted. Hoax is unraveling. Okay, well, all I can say to all of those Americans, the 73% that we're hearing exist. When we read articles like, oh my God, CNN, hey, 
there's another organization who claims that there's a risk that Earth is becoming a hothouse. You would hope that they would be able to see through the lies. But they've not done any research on all of the agendas taking place and one does need to connect the dots and you know, you've got to do the research on the weather modification, you've got to do the research on all of the ways in which one can create heat. One patent here, weather modification by artificial satellites. Modify cooling, warming, or precipitations of selected regions of Earth to warm a local region with this technology they can cause rapid heating of another air mass they can create special desired weather desired local weather conditions at discrete time and locations they don't need any chemicals they can just use remarkably computer codes to increase the heat satellites beaming microwaves emitting microwaves you've got all of the microwave cell towers the Gwen towers the ultra low frequencies the Doppler radar stations with the high frequencies yes man is causing these heat waves and many people have been talking about the night temperatures I have seen mainstream media articles on how night temperatures are getting warmer not cooler with this technology okay they can dump black carbon dust into the atmosphere which can also be used to increase the temperature but they can also store energy energy that is used to use that black carbon dust in the atmosphere they can release that energy at a specific time to create a heat wave this technology is beyond what most people can really understand but here the and the SEs are satellite engines sorry this is I can't blow it up anymore so the satellite engines can store this energy and they can release it energy collected and stored during daytime can be discharged during nighttime that's why you're seeing nighttime temperature not cooling down here's another patent cosmic particle ignition of artificially ionized plasma patterns in the atmosphere localized heating modification of the steering winds that can influence weather phenomena influence the charge distribution in mesocyclones they can create lightning yeah huh. they can provide localized heating of the atmosphere they can provide localized heating of the atmosphere they can generate acoustic waves that could be absorbed in the tight steering wind patterns they can create wind oh these wildfires that have high winds it's a means of locally changing the electrical conductivity air in specific regions of a weather pattern 
They can manipulate weather patterns, air heating to generate atmospheric wave phenomena, air heating invention. Tornadoes could be prevented or created. They can redirect thunderstorms, spawn thunderstorms, atmospheric heating, atmospheric heating as a research tool. I, I know that this is getting long. One of the reasons why I'm just putting this out there is anybody else who wants to create a video here, just go to the links below. You have the information if you want to just um, uh, redo my video. I don't care. Satellites used to heat the atmosphere. Weather modification of tornadoes and of the jet stream. Influencing hurricanes and typhoons by influencing the position of the jet stream. Well, weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy, artificial heat source, powerful heat source, tremendously powerful heat source. Now, did I enlarge all of those words? Uh, did I just put them on because this is what I'm saying? No. This is what William Gray and Frank and Myron Corrin and Charles Stokes have said about the use of black carbon dust to modify the weather. A powerful heat source and they can modify the weather very quickly. All links are below. Somehow we've got to get through to people about this climate change, global warming lie. Now, yeah, the Earth is heating up. Why? Because they have been geoengineering the planet for decades. And they have changed the climate due to the artificial clouds that they are creating. They are trapping heat with this full-scale coverage of thick cloud. They trap the heat in. I understand that it's difficult to wrap one's head around everything. I understand that it's difficult because you really do need to plow into an awful lot of research to understand how everything is connected. All I can say is for all of those people who refuse to understand this, all of you who are trying to get it through to those in your lives, they do need to be regarded as the enemy. As the enemy. This is not okay. This is not okay because life is dying on this planet because of what these psychopathic narcissistic nut jobs are doing and they get away with it even when it's so obvious because we do have a majority of people who never want to do anything to change I'm living comfortably don't disturb it I'm just gonna call you crazy I don't care if you think that I'm an adult child and that I don't critically think I don't care all of it could be true but I'm surrounded by a whole lot of people who give me support who do you have people are supported by one another supported in their stupidity in their immorality they all tell one another that they're just fabulous and great. But nothing can be further from the truth. Radiation induced temperature changes. Scientific papers 
military documents, patents, mountains of evidence, and we still can't get through it. Unbelievable.